Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about position vector. Position vector is a concept that we use a lot in finding the direction of forces. <clears throat> so let's say we have a 3D Cartesian coordinate with x, y, and z. So x, y, and z. Position vector connects two points in our coordinate. So if we are dealing with a three-dimensional coordinate, we have, let's say this point is A, point A have X coordinate, Y coordinate, and Z coordinate. Point B similarly have three coordinates, so X, Y, and Z. And this vector is our position vector connecting point A to point B. And we call it R, A, B. So pay attention, the order of indices are important here. R, A, B is not the same as R, B, A. R, A, B means we are starting at A and then we are going to B. If you want to find the position vector, that would be the coordinate of B minus the coordinate of A. So R A B, which is a vector, that's why I'm gonna draw an arrow on the top, would be X B minus X A, and then I hat, the unit vector in X direction, plus Y B minus y a j as well as z b minus z a okay. so it's a vector with r j and k component and r a b is the coordinate of b minus the coordinate of a or you can think of it we are going we are moving from a to b uh, how many unit vectors are we moving in x direction in y direction and z direction. For example, if you want to find, let's uh, solve an example, if you want to find the position vector R A B, if the coordinates of A and B, let's have a numerical example, would be seven, negative four, and two, it needs to have a unit, meter, that's the position, and then our B, would be negative four, six, and seven meters. So we have two points, A and B. We're gonna find a position vector between the two. So the position vector is the coordinate of B minus the coordinate of A. So if I wanna, if I wanna find R A B, that would be simply negative four, that's the X component minus coordinate of A, which is seven, I plus six minus negative four. So that would be plus four. Again, minus negative four would be plus four. Plus seven minus two, okay. So that is simply negative 11 I plus 10 J plus five, okay. And that would be our position vector. So the next concept that we are going to talk about is uh, unit vector. So let me write it in a new page. Unit vector, as the name suggests, gives us information about the direction of our vector and has a magnitude of one. That's why it's called unit vector. So a unit vector has a magnitude of one and indicates the direction. The definition of unit vector is uh, our vector divided by its magnitude. So if you want to find UAB and we are dealing with position vector, it doesn't have to be a position vector. It could be a force vector. It could be a velocity vector. If you want to find a unit vector, it means the direction of that vector. We just divide the vector by its magnitude. So in this case, I'm just giving you an example of position vector. So UAB 
which is the unit vector, is RAB divided by its magnitude. Let's solve, solve for an example. Let's we want to find UAB. If RAB, the position vector, is negative 11i, 10j, and 5k. So the position vector that we found earlier. Unit, never forget the unit. Even if I forget, doesn't mean it's okay. So we're going to find UAB. We just said that UAB, unit vector, is position vector divided by its magnitude. So I have to divide the whole vector, negative 11i, 10j, and 5k by its magnitude. And how do you find a magnitude? Each component squared. So that gives me 11 squared plus 10 squared plus 5. If you notice, I didn't write the negative sign here because it really doesn't matter. It's going to be squared. So that means that negative 11, if you find the answer for this one, would be 15.7. I just round it up. I plus 10, again, 15.7. J, 5, 15.7. That's our unit vector. The magnitude of this vector is one, and it gives us the direction. That's all it does. It doesn't have any magnitude. So a unit vector, for every vector, we can find the corresponding coordinate direction angle. So if we have a vector, we can find the coordinate angle. So that would be cosine alpha, so cosine alpha, the angle between our vector and x axis would be negative 11, 15.7. Therefore, alpha for our case would be 134.5 degrees. And you can see it's more than 90 simply because the value that we have is negative here. We could do the same thing for beta and gamma. So beta will get 50.37. I want you to find beta and gamma yourself, then compare your answer with mine to see if you get uh, the same value. 